Hello everyone, it is R Trades back here with another video. I want to thank y'all for joining me. Guys, in this video we're going to go over new squawks uh, week ahead. So guys, this is something that you can listen to. I'm just going to read this article and then we might uh, go ahead and go have a look at the charts as well. Guys, if you enjoy this content, if you enjoy listening uh, or watching about the futures markets, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. That great, greatly helps me. Um, and guys, if you are going to sign up for a prop firm account, Top Step, Apex, Trading Pit, I've got referral links in the description box below. Uh, please make sure to sign up using my referral links. Those really help uh, help support the channel, help support me. So thank you guys. All right. With that said, let's get into this news uh, squawk article and look at the week ahead, guys. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my uh, camera and get to reading. Okay, guys, the week ahead, 20, the 24th to 28th of June, highlights include USPCE, BOJ, SOO, Canadian and Australian CPI, Reichsbank and CBRT previews, and the Biden-Trump debate. So this was published here on Friday from News Squawk. Monday, Bank of Japan summary of opinions, German IFO survey, German import prices for May. Tuesday, Japanese services PPI in, for May, Canadian CPI May, and UK GDP Q1. Wednesday, Australian CPI for May and German GFK consumer sentiment. Thursday, the Biden-Trump debate on CNN, Reichsbank announcement, CBRT announcement, CNB announcement, European Council, Chinese industrial profits for May, an easy sentiment survey, and U.S. GDP final. Friday, European Council, uh, Tokyo, J Japanese Tokyo CPI, activity data, German unemployment, U.S. PCE and the U.S. University of Michigan final. Okay, guys, uh, this is for Monday. The Bank of Japan will release the summary of opinions from the June meeting next week, which could provide further insight into the board members' thinking during the latest policy meeting, where it kept its short-term policy rate unchanged at 0 spot 0 to 0 spot 1 percent, as widely expected through a unanimous vote. Although it caught markets off guard as it defied expectations for the central bank to announce an immediate tapering of its bond purchases and instead decided to keep purchases in line with its decision in March. Nonetheless, the Bank of Japan effectively kicked the can down the road as it declared it is to trim purchases but will decide on a specific bond buying reduction plan for the next one to two years at the next meeting in July. While the decision on uh, Japanese government bond purchases was made by an 8 to 1 vote in which the BOJ board member Nakamura dissented, citing the bank should decide to reduce purchases after reassessing developments in economic activity and prices in the July 2024 Outlook Report. Furthermore, the BOJ said it will hold a meeting with bond market participants on July 9 to July 10 on its policy decision, and it expects that underlying inflation is to gradually accelerate, while Governor Ueda uh, said during the post-meeting press conference that the reduction of JGB purchases will be a considerable volume and they will start a reduction of JGB purchases immediately after deciding at the July meeting as well as noted that a July hike is naturally possible depending on the data. All right, Canadian CPI on Tuesday in June, the Bank of Canada cut rates by 25 basis points to 4 spot 75% arguing that monetary policy no longer needed to be as restrictive with continued evidence that underlying inflation is easing. Recent inflation data had increased policymakers' confidence that inflation will continue to move towards the 2% target, though it is still noted that risks to the inflation outlook remain. The Governing Council is closely watching the evolution of core inflation, adding that it remained particularly focused on the balance between demand and supply in the economy, inflation expectations, wage growth, and corporate pricing behavior. Ahead, the Bank of Canada said three-month measures of core inflation suggest continued downward momentum in CPI, adding that it remains resolute in its commitment to restoring price stability. Australia CPI Wednesday. The monthly CPI indicator is expected to tick higher from 3.8% from 3.6%. This month's data will shed light on the unfolding of services inflation during the June quarter. That being said, analysts at Westpac remind us that only 60% of the quarterly CPI is surveyed by the monthly CPI indicator, and many components are surveyed just one month each quarter and some only once a year, thus may not accurately reflect the quarterly CPI. Quote, 
Our preliminary forecast for the May monthly CPI indicator is for a flat print in the month, end quote. Given a negative spot 4% month decline in May 2023, this would see the annual pace lift from 3 spot 6 a year to 4% 4, uh, 4 a year, Westpac says, adding that this will be the first instance since September of 2023 where the annual rate of inflation in the monthly CPI indicator surpasses that of the quarterly CPI. As a reminder, in the most recent uh, RBA confab where rates were maintained, the central bank kept to a hawkish tone on inflation as it reiterated that inflation remains above target and is proving persistent, as well as noted that inflation is easing but has been doing so more slowly than previously expected and remains high. Furthermore, it stated that the path of interest rates will be that will be best to ensure that inflation returns to target in a reasonable time frame remains uncertain and the board is not ruling anything in or out. On the data itself, uh, Royal Bank of Australia's Bullock said that they need a lot to go their way to bring inflation back into range and noted that the entire economy is to be looked at, not just Q2 CPI. Okay, guys, I'm going to move down to the Biden-Trump debate. Biden-Trump debate on Thursday, the first debate between President Biden and former President Trump will be the first of at least two debates before the November 5th election. The 90-minute debate will take place in Georgia and is scheduled to be on CNN at 21 Eastern, 2100 Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, June 27th. Going into the debate, a Fox News poll revealed Biden has overtaken Trump for the first time since October, with 50% of respondents indicating that they'd vote for him, while 48% showed a preference for Trump. Analysts said the polling may reflect Trump's recent felony charges of falsifying business documents. However, an Ipsos poll finds that Trump would beat Biden 37 percent to 35 percent overall in the seven swing states, which are Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, and Nevada. In terms of the market impact, analysts see the debate as focusing attention on the impact that higher tariffs could have on growth, inflation, and interest rates. Capital Economics said most of Trump's major policy initiatives would be inflationary, whether that be narrowing of the, tr of the trade deficit via tariffs or a dollar devaluation. Reports suggest that Trump would introduce higher tariffs on China and universal tariffs on other countries to narrow the U.S. trade deficit, which could result in a higher USD and inflation and even hit Eurozone growth rates too. Curbing immigration, which would impact the labor market, Many argue that higher immigration is the potential explanation for the strength and resilience seen in U.S. labor market data or compromising the Fed's independence. Uh, there have been multiple reports that Trump would look to replace Fed Chair Powell, potentially with Kevin Warsh, Kevin Hassett, or Art Laffer. Okay, guys, uh, on Friday we've got the Japanese Tokyo CPI. Tokyo inflation data for June is due next week, which is seen as a leading indicator for the national price trend. While participants will be eyeing the data to see if there is further acceleration. Uh, to the headline and core inflation readings seen in the capital region last month. As a reminder, Tokyo inflation in May printed uh, mixed as a headline C as headline CPI was firmer than expected at two spot two percent versus it expected two spot one percent. While X X fresh food CPI matched estimates at one spot nine percent versus expected one spot nine percent, and X uh, X fresh food and energy CPI also printed in line with forecasts but slowed from the previous 1.7% versus expected 1.7%. The acceleration in the headline and core readings in May was driven by higher electricity charges, which rose 13.1% year over year, owing to an increase in the fee added to electricity bills to cover the cost of promoting renewable energy and is seen likely to persist, while prices of food, excluding perishables, maintained its pace of growth at 3.2%. However, underlying inflation moderated and is anticipated to continue doing so, which if materialized, would spur doubts regarding the ability to sustainably and stably achieve the central bank's 2% target 
and could effectively lessen the scope for the Bank of Japan to hike rates further this year. Recently, Japanese Prime Minister Kishida said the government is to extend fuel subsidies to end 2024 and roll out electricity and gas bill relief measures between August and October. Okay, guys, and we have the USPCE on Friday. In May, US CPI eased to 3.3% year over year, with the expected being 3.4%, with the core measure falling to 3.4% year over year. Expected was 3.5%. The super core gauge fell to 4.8% year over year, the first decline in the annual super core rate since last, last October. Meanwhile, uh, producers' price inflation or pr producers' price index eased to a rate of two spot two PPI eased to a rate of two spot two percent year over year in the month. And the expected is two spot five percent, and the previous is two spot three percent. While the core measure eased to two spot three percent year over year, with the core measure eased to two spot three percent year over year. With those data in hand, analysts are able to accurately predict how the PCE data will come in. The Wall Street Journal's Fed watcher Nick Timoreos said that inflation modelers expect the core PCE index rose around 0.08 to 0.13% month over month in May versus 0.2% month over month in April. That would translate to a 2.6% year over year core PCE inflation rate down from 2.8% in April and would hold the six-month annualized core PCE rate around 3.2 to 3.3% in May, while the three-month annualized rate would drop back below 3% for the first time since January. In its June policy statement, the Fed said that, quote, there has been modest further progress on inflation, although updated economic projections saw the central bank slightly nudge up its end-of-year inflation forecast to 2.6%. In the post-meeting commentary, officials have generally welcomed the recent tick lower in prices, but have spoken about the need to see further lower inflation data to achieve confidence that prices will sustainably fall back to target before they can feel comfortable in endorsing race rate cuts. The updated economic projections from June also revised down the number of rate cuts seen this year. The Fed now predicts just one rate cut in 2024, down from its previous forecast for three, but analysts note how the median and mode are close, and it would only take a couple of officials endorsing rate cuts to see two reductions this year. Currently, money markets are pricing around 47 basis points of rate cuts this year, which is fully discounting one 25 basis point cut and a very high probability of seeing that second reduction. Okay, guys, that is from News Squawk. And now we're over here on Bloomberg, guys. The Bloomberg close, America's American tradition, American edition. Here's what you need to know to end your day. And this was on Friday. NVIDIA's run as the most valuable company is over for now. The Supreme Court upholds a domestic violence gun ban and bankers skip the Hamptons and Europe to play lacrosse. NVIDIA shares tumbled on Friday while Wall Street's massive quarterly expiration of options left stock traders more cautious. The semiconductor giant shed about $222 billion after a rally earlier in the week pushed its valuation to $3.3 trillion, just above Microsoft and Apple. Traders said there weren't any fundamental reasons behind the sell-off, though it underscores the breakneck pace at which NVIDIA shares have climbed this year. The stock also played a role in Friday's triple witching, Wall Street's five-spot five trillion options expiry in which derivatives contracts tied to equities, index options, and futures mature. The event otherwise caused barely a ripple as stocks flip-flopped between gains and losses. Treasury 10-year yields were little changed while France's bond risk premium over Germany closed at the highest since 2012. Okay, guys, with that being said, I'm going to head over now to TradingView and show you some of our markets on a weekly perspective. Going to start here with the ES. So the ES futures, you can see three weeks higher in a row. This is our third uh, green candle. Now that candle did end up, let's see, closing right at that 50% point of its range. So I would say an, an up, but perhaps indecisive move. Uh, from a technical perspective, you see we are well above that 20-period simple moving average. We're above the upper Bollinger Band, and last week's candle ended at right at its midpoint. 
Okay, guys, let's head over to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ uh, closed final print at 20,009 20, evens with the candle looking like a basically a spinning top candle or an inverted hammer closing well below that 50% point of its range. The NASDAQ is seeing its third weekly gain uh, sitting over the uh, second deviation Bollinger Band and well above the 20 period simple moving average. Okay, guys, let's look at some of our Forex pairs now. Let's start with the Euro. Euro seen with its fifth black candle below the 20 period simple moving average, trading down uh, towards that lower Bollinger Band. The last candle looking like a, a, uh, a, spinning, a spinning top candle. From an ICT perspective, we're coming down to a weekly inefficiency here from the week for mon uh, Monday, the 15th of April, 2024. So ending in that candle's wick, and from an ICT perspective, it looks like we're headed down towards sell-side liquidity. Okay, guys, let's look at uh, British Pound Futures. Pound Futures last week ended fourth, uh, its fourth week down. From an ICT perspective, we're heading into a fair value gap on a weekly, weekly time basis, currently trading right at that 20-period simple moving average uh, and at the consequent encroachment of a... A weekly fair value gap. Okay, guys, let's have a look at gold futures. Gold futures um, had a week down from an ICT perspective. It looks like we're headed into what could be called an order block or a pivot point. Above that 20 period simple moving average on the Bollinger Bands, we're also in a prior uh, fair value gap from the week of Monday, the 1st of April, 2024. So you can see that we're right at that. Uh, fair value gap, the 50% point, close to that 50% point um, from Monday, the 1st of April, 24. Okay, guys, 30-year bond futures. From an ICT perspective, guys, we are trading in that into that uh, inefficient candle from the Monday, the 3rd of June. So we can see that long upper wick on, on the 3rd of June, trading above a prior uh, sell-side fair value gap. From an ICT perspective, it would appear to me that we're headed towards buy side liquidity. So I would expect that the market's going to run on that weekly buy side liquidity um, at least above that 122 spot 18. Okay, guys, and then let's have a look at the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 ending last week up uh, right about that 50% point of the weekly range. Looks like the market is headed down to that sell side liquidity, currently trading in. A, a, a wick inefficiency from the Monday, the 29th of April, 2024. All right, finally, let's have a look at crude oil. Crude oil looking like it's headed towards buy side liquidity, which would be up here from buy side liquidity located at $86.24. Uh, buy side liquidity from the week of Monday, the 8th of April, 2024. Generally speaking to me, it looks like oil is headed for some upward movement with two weeks now of green candles. Okay, guys, finally, let's talk about Bitcoin, and that is Bitcoin futures. Bitcoin futures with the second, uh, second bearish week in a row. Bitcoin futures currently trading right at that 20 period simple moving average. From an ICT perspective, I would say that we're headed down towards uh, sell side, sell side liquidity. Although I don't know how quickly we're going to get down to there, that 56,000, 57,000. Um, from an ICT perspective, we can see that the market like to hang out and keep testing that that midpoint of that wick inefficiency from the week of Monday, the 8th of April. Okay, guys, if I had to take a wild guess, I would say con we're likely to see continued downward movement on Bitcoin. All right, guys. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching the video. This has been your market recap for Saturday, June 22nd, 2024. If you like this content, you want to support me, support this channel, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and use the affiliate links in the description box below.